Okay, so Ola, the floor is yours. <laughs> Okay, I guess it's going to be uh, more difficult than I thought, but let's let's do it. Okay, so welcome. Uh, the very uh, the very first this year, a uh, transition manager open days uh, is about to start. We are here with uh, uh, people who are involved in creating the uh, the program and some alumni. So we are going to use both voices today to tell you more about what it is and how we uh, how we want to encourage you to take uh, over uh, about your career, your development role, and and so on. So the plan for the uh, for today is that we uh, we move from person to person actually, and we uh, share some knowledge, some insights, some experiences about what is uh, transition management and what is the transition manager academy did to ourselves, myself included. Uh, so this is the this is the idea for uh, for today. Uh, so um, from the very very beginning of the idea, Gosha, maybe I will pass it over to you for a sec. Um, what was the you know original story behind the Transition Manager Academy? Because this is you know second uh, um, the the sixth edition is finished. So the seventh is ahead of us. So uh, a little bit of the story in the context. Uh, uh, Mike, Mike, if you want to jump in, of course, go ahead. But I'm really interested in you know the the story, and I I think that's interesting to uh, to see what was the original uh, root cause of it and what happened then. Okay, so uh, so just so let me explain. There was a quite interesting story behind the name Transition Manager Academy, uh, and the uh, it it didn't come from me. It didn't. Uh, it wasn't me who uh, mm, uh, came up with this idea. Uh, Wojtek Tyborowski, when we were um, working for PMI Project Management Institute together. Uh, here in Gdańsk, he approached me. He was a director of education of ABSL, uh, and he approached me to uh, mm, to um, set up something for uh, transition leaders, for transition managers. And at the moment, they were collaborating with one of the um, university here in Prague City. And first approach um, that was to organize. Uh, this with the this university because they were delivering quite a lot of uh, uh, training for uh, um, service shared services companies um, BPO shared services that's the that's the still that's the industry uh, growing in Poland quite fast yeah? and that time uh, that was the beginning of I mean maybe not the beginning because I I remember when. I started working for Reuters and for Thomson Reuters. That was one of the first company here for that scale. So that was the first idea how we came up with this. And, and we created it. And then we decided to find the best university in a business school in Poland. And uh, that's Kozminski, top number one. Yeah. And, uh, and top number one, uh, I've just seen the message. Kasia probably can say more. Uh, on this, but uh, but according to Forbes, that's the best university, um, private university, but also a very very high in the ranking, global ranking as well. So so that's how we started. Okay, and uh, um, I would really love to know as well what is the biggest value that you wanted to give people within the program from the very beginning, the sixth edition that we finished together actually in the first part of this year and you want to deliver further on. So we'll start with you and Mike, we're going to pass to yourself as well. Because the question is what kind of value we want to give people that are joining the program and uh, what they will have at the end of it um, from your perspective, from your experience after all those editions that are already finished. That was a question to me as well. So maybe yeah, let's 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 start with you, and we are going to to oh, pass it to I would pass it. it uh, uh, I I think that would be great to hear from the students from the first edition. Maybe Pavel is from the first edition, so maybe he is the best one yeah. to start. With. Let's let's do it. Let's let's I mix it up. Of course, <laughs> I would be I would be really really uh, interested in in his view after so many years. Yeah, as well. Yeah. Uh, can you hear me? Yes. yes. Yeah, okay, good. Uh, yeah, I'm happy to share some, uh, some let's say, uh, observations, uh, impressions 
uh, from this study. It was a long time ago, but uh, uh, I would say the first thing that, of course, the the academy itself was a unique one. It was very interactive, as a workshop style, very open. So uh, you can be present uh, both, uh, not only a body, but also as a mind. And you can go through the change for this learning curve being on this university. So this is this is point number one. Uh, secondly, the diversity. There was there is a very you know diverse group of people during the course, and also you could uh, uh, exchange the thoughts, knowledge, and also keep the contacts for future. And the third one, the last but not least, is that uh, for me also was a kind of uh, good kick of to keep on let's say learning. Uh, also in future. So uh, I'm still in contact with Małgosia, uh, also with Przemek, uh, also getting possibility to attend some courses, still uh, get a consultation. And uh, again, this is also done in a very, uh, let's say, uh, the way like a partner, it's not like a, only teacher and student. So so as I said, it's a unique course uh, because of this, its nature, uh, many different diverse uh, people and uh, also you can gain the continuation of uh, of your growth. Uh, I think then maybe the fourth, the, I think the last thing is that uh, uh, it's not only a theory, it's really this knowledge is uh, it's uh, very practical. Uh, you can apply uh, on your work. So I can say that uh, after this course, I think I had like 10 important projects afterwards with a great success and uh, it's very helpful. So this is all from my side. Thank you. Okay, thank you, Pavel. We are going to come back to your story. No worries, it's not the fin you know, the end of, uh, of, of your sharing, I, uh, I hope. Mike, I will pass over the question to you as a part of the, you know, uh, the didactic part of the, of, the, of the course, of the whole program. What do you believe is the biggest value? What's the most important within this program that you've created? That's a really good question. Um, for me personally, the biggest value in it is that I love doing it and I enjoy it. Now, I say that, and that, that sounds like it's a throwaway comment. It's not really. I think that's where the success lies. So if you go back to your original question to, to Gosha, you know, how did it start? Um, for me, it started um, because I met people who thought like I did and who seem to believe the things that I believe. So I've been a leader. I've, I've I've done the job. I've managed. I've led teams. We've led transitions. And I've had successes. And I've made mistakes. And I've learned from the mistakes. Um, and I, I had a way that I thought these things should be run. I'm very much a people person. I'm very much about empowering teams. Um, and I seemed, when I met Gosha and when I met Shemek, I'd met people who thought like me. So we've basically created a, a transition manager academy which is kind of the best of us how we think things should be done now what the value for me is that we've now done it six times um, and i think we must have well over a hundred alumni or about a hundred alumni out there most of whom stay in touch most of whom are succeeding going on to bigger things and the feedback we get is that it works for them too so I think the value for me is that this is a, yes, there's theory, we will teach, because one of the things the three of us have in common is that we we love knowledge and we love new knowledge and we love learning. So it's not we've created a course and that's it. Uh, the course is continually changing because the world is changing, because we read or we meet people and we learn new things and we bring that into the course. But the thing that we all do, I think, is that, and and, and you will know this, as, as well as perhaps uh, Pavel and Marius, but you know, we, it's as much about the participants as it is about us. So the biggest value for me is that I get to meet great people. I get to learn from great people while I'm coaching and mentoring and guiding them. Um, and I think that's the biggest value that others get as well. Because what I hear from people like you who've been on the course is we learn a lot for you, Mike, Gosha and Shemek, but we learn as much from each other. And it is that network of connections that you build that Pavel talked about that's really important as well. So I'm sure if that's a long answer, but the, 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 the really important value is that we've made it a course which is more about people 
well, as much about people, it is about knowledge. Yeah, that's beautiful. And I I am a witness of that. So I can I can back up the story because this is something that I've experienced as myself as well. Um uh let's take two steps back. Uh when it comes to the transition management, the transition and leadership itself, because this is like the subject of the, the of the program of the course. And we talk a lot about the change, the constant change, transition, transformation, all of those things are there. Uh, so um, the question is, Tremek, I'm going to move uh, to yourself. For you personally, professionally, who is transition manager? Who is a transition leader? What does it mean to be that kind of person? If you would you know, say the most important characteristics, like like let's say top three to you know, shorten that, uh, what would you say that's important so right, right now from your experience, professional experience and your personal experience as well? Yeah. Well, li limiting the the options is interesting thing. Um, I think on, on the high level, when you're thinking about what's the difference between transition versus transformation leader, right? Or transition versus change leader and so on. Of course, they overlap, right? A number of characteristics and everything else would, would be very, very, very uh, similar. Uh, I think that the key message here is that transition leader is not only... Um, focusing on the actual result of whatever change or transformation uh, that person is running, but uh, is very much focused on the people that are involved in that, right? So it's the person that helps transition people from one stage to another, right? And, and help them, guide them and move them through that. So this uh, people aspect is super, super important. So that probably would be, would be one of the key characteristics and a little bit of the difference from other perspectives. Everyone will have people on the top of their list or one of the top levels. I think transition manager would be there at the very, very high level. So that's my shortest one. Okay, thank you. Mariusz, I'll pass over to you the question. Uh, so the transition leader, transition manager, in your opinion, experience, who is the person, what kind of characteristics, skills, behaviors maybe uh, the person has? Mm. Uh, for me, um, apart from uh, hello everybody, I I had some problems, but thanks God, uh, this time uh, it's uh, great, uh, and I have occasion to see you. And uh, first of all, uh, I feel like we have uh, had last our session a month ago, so that that that's, that's great. The internet got failed. <laughs> it's not okay, it's Marius, you froze. Okay, uh, Pavel, I'll pass over the question to you until the Marius is back. If you, if you can fill it out, I will be great. Transition manager, transition leader. Yeah, uh, maybe I would uh, uh, refer to maybe one particular part, which can be, I think, interesting that uh, we are. We're talking about the managing of uh, teams of people who uh, report to you or collaborate with you. I would add also one very important element, which is uh, uh, how to make happen that the senior level goes through the transition. So also that's the, the key thing that uh, you come to the organization, at least in my situation, very often, I'm as an interim manager. So... Uh, I I meet the seniors, the like board members, the the president of the board, and he's explaining to me what is the situation. And then, of course, I can hear him. I can go to see the organization and coming back with some uh, feedback. And then, when is the that's an interesting point? How to also make a transition of the point of view of the of the leader? Because then only the organization organization make go through the change or the transition. So uh, that's also a very interesting point. So uh, this is also what uh, I think was very good and helpful regarding the uh, the course and further, let's say, uh, uh, experience. Uh, look at the transition of the seniors we have above. It's very, very, very interesting. Mm, that's true. 
And uh, the more we have experience, this is my experience at least, the more we have experience and uh, the more we, we've seen, the more we should learn, but it's not always the case, right? So we are not always smarter and smarter while gaining experience. Mm -hmm. mm, thank you, Paolo. Okay, uh, Elena, I'll move over the next question to you. And I would uh, I would ask a little bit about what is happening in the in the world in the organizations and everything that is going on in here from the uh, from a lot of things that is influencing what uh, is happening over in the organizations regardless of the, the industry regardless of the size of the company so from your experience again professional personnel you can choose whatever you want what are top let's say again three let's let's use the the the, the number to you know shorten that uh, the option, uh, the option span. What are the top three challenges, in your opinion, right now that are happening in the organization, um, uh, all over the world, on the mark, on the labor market with employees, with all of these changes that are happening, with technology, AI <laughs> should be on the on the uh, on the list as well. Uh, what, from your experience and point of view, uh, are the most um, yeah, challenging things right now? Uh, in fact, uh, there are plenty of challenges and uh, it's extremely difficult just to identify or to mention uh, one or two of them. I have been working in logistics since the beginning uh, of my career. So, uh, in fact, uh, uh, and that's the reason I would like uh, to go more into uh, transition uh, topic and to learn more because we can see um, very important and uh, crucial changes in our industry. So I'm not an expert in uh, other industries. So let me just uh, um, refer to my one. Uh, and uh, first of all, um, we can see that there is huge problem with uh, um, uh, employees, for example, with drivers, there is huge lack of drivers, like uh, uh, more than uh, half a million in Europe. And uh, this diversity, except of uh, uh, diversity in our companies. So uh, it's very important and uh, we need to get used to adjust our companies uh, to it. Transformational uh, uh, revolution, let's say, or just uh, uh, transformation uh, generally of our approach uh, in terms of using AI and uh, all this uh, modern uh, tools and uh, equipments so as well there is huge uh, resistance from uh, the size of our employees so and uh, uh, we need to implement as fast as possible all these changes but there is uh, um, visible resistance and uh, this uh, transition process should be uh, uh, conducted in a proper way and of course uh, um, a financial side as well so uh, it's said now that that logistics uh, is dying, let's say, because it's a huge crisis and uh, all uh, processes like optimization, lean management, uh, Six Sigma, so everything should be implemented uh, again as soon as possible just to uh, reduce uh, as much as possible costs to save uh, our companies and uh, all these areas, not all, but at least uh, uh, key uh, for logistics industry, um, are required uh, proper approach to transition. Okay, thank you. Mariola, are you here? I'm just checking because I can see you. I'll pass the question to you if you're here with us. Yeah, I can hear you. Um, what I can say, uh, now I'm working for the uh, Orland Capital, Capital Group and we are during uh, green transition. It's connected with technology, AI, human resources and so on. Uh, and I'm looking the best place to find uh, the best knowledge to, to deal with it. Okay, and the biggest opportunity for you, because you know it is quite interesting that the huge transformation and the, the industry itself, um, the opportunities, the chances that you see for the from the company's perspective and from, from the business perspective, people perspective, what would you list from the other side of the story? Ah, uh, yeah, it's a hard question at the moment because I don't know, uh, I don't have uh, knowledge about 
transformation from your point of view. For me, best challenge is to, the best challenge is to deal with people uh, during this transition because we have hard time for our company, for our business, generally speaking. Uh, and uh, during next 10 years, we have to change completely our business. So I think uh, to, um, to give safety our human resources is the best challenge for us. Okay, thank you for that. Uh, Gosh, I'll move over to you a little bit. You have uh, you did avoid one of my questions, so I'm going to <laughs> right back at you when it comes to the next one. Um, the people part is all over the place, and right? we say about business, we talk about processes, about project management, about all of those things that we are going to talk about in a sec when it comes to the program itself and the, the main um, parts of it, so people know what is in there practically, because this is important when it comes to decision-making process. But the people part is there all over the place. Mike mentioned it as well, already Shamek as well. So uh, the question is, what are the main things that people should learn, in your opinion, from your experience again, to be better when it comes to the people management? That is a huge part of the transition management, project management, process management, and so on. All of those people, all those things are around people because uh, it's not only robots uh, in there yet. So from our experience and massive experience in uh, in different um, organizations, different industries, what do you think that we should learn as leaders to be better with it? Uh, I would add just one thing and you wouldn't be surprised because we keep repeating it, it's curiosity. Uh, so um, uh, be curious, ask questions, uh, um, learn how to find yourself uh, comfortable uh, in an unknown so uh, we call it lost in the fog when we don't know how and when we don't know uh, what to do yeah uh, but just to develop it a bit uh, uh, there is a, a research uh, because um, I recently I had a conversation about changes uh, what change in project management, in leading project, in trans leading transformation, transitions, generally in agile. Uh, and I, I uh, myself, what I observe, change a lot. Although what we see, we still about 75% 75, 75 of, uh, of uh, uh, project fail or uh, have troubles. Yeah. Uh, you mentioned 80% of transition transformations fail. Yeah? So it's a lot. And it's still for years, I don't know, 20, 30 years, it hasn't changed. And uh, I know the answer why, although it's so difficult because we focus quite a lot, mainly all most programs like project management, transformation programs, we focus quite a lot on, on the structure, on the structural uh, co uh, complexity because we have three types of complexity uh, it's structural uh, emergent and social political yeah so we focus 10 percent of problems uh, comes from struct uh, structural um, complexity then another 10 percent from the emergent one a lot of changes we have a lot of, and 80 percent of problems uh, comes from the social political complexity and Courses, when we have the courses, we focus a little bit, a little bit on teams, 10%, 20% of courses uh, focus on people part. And we change this. We introduce this program to change. So 80% it's people, 20% it's structure. Because uh, that's 80% of, of problems, challenges, comes from the stakeholders. We deal with hundreds very often hundreds of stakeholders, they have different motivations. They have different agendas. They have hidden agendas as well. They commune because it's your passion communication. They communicate in different way. So for us, project managers, uh, leaders of the programs, transformation, transition, any, any project, any 
team, when we, when we deal with people, we need to learn how to listen. So deep listening or uh, mindful listening, we call it uh, differently. Uh, we need to also uh, ask questions and then listen to the answer, of course, not only ask questions, but uh, listen to the answers yeah? and to get to know each other, to understand. That's why we put so much focus on, it's called, according to PMI, power skills. I know Mike doesn't like it, although it's people skills. Yeah, so it's soft skills, whatever you call it. I don't think it's soft. It's very uh, difficult to learn. And the first thing we do, we start from self-awareness. We need to understand ourselves. We have different communication styles. We have different personalities. We come from different backgrounds, from different countries. So different values. We, uh, we solve conflicts in different way. We like different leadership st uh, styles, yeah? So we are really complex. We are really complex. So first thing, it's self-awareness. And once we uh, understand ourselves, we can lead teams and, uh, and, and companies, organizations. Yeah? So first step, start from yourself. That's why we have created Transition Manager Academy. Yeah, I really like the part of uh, what connected with the, with the questions and actually listening to the to the answer. Uh, and uh, like a week ago or two weeks ago or something, I heard the sentence that stuck with me and dawned on me a lot on, on different things. The quality of the answers depends on the quality of the questions. So this is something that uh, I think that it fits perfectly because I want what you just just mentioned. So thank you for sharing that, Mike. I'm going to go go over to you with a question. Curiosity is already taken, <laughs> so I know okay. it's one of your favorites. That's fine. That's fine. <laughs> From your perspective, because you're a people person and you really do care about these people parts, uh, the, the the building leadership around people, so people centric approach, I would say, and um, from your perspective what we should learn. You work with different people from different cultures, different companies, different backgrounds. Uh, as I guess I mentioned about the diversity of people. Uh, we see during the programs within the groups, we are all um, different. And um, what is it for you? What you believe, what you feel that we should learn more, focus on more? Um, well, that's a very good question. Um... Actually, there's a word that I don't like, and the word I don't like is should. Okay, there's no obligation for us to do anything. Um, you know, we should all do what is best for us. Now, that sounds really soft, but actually, for me, that's that's part of the secret of good transition management. Okay, if you think about what we're doing, we are generally running complex programs that involve or affect lots of people. And, you know, as we've just learned, as individuals, we're really complicated and we struggle to understand ourselves. So as soon as you start to try and affect lots and lots of people, there's any number of ways in which things can can change or go wrong. Um, and you can view that as a problem or you can view that as actually a glorious thing. It's the reason we achieve transitions is because of the multiple skills, multiple beliefs, multiple values, multiple ways of doing things, you know, that, that people have. So I think that you know the real value lies as a leader in recognizing for yourself and helping others to recognize the diversity of skills and talents uh, that that we all have, and that together we can we we can make a difference. Now we may not know how to do that, but we can believe that we can find it together. So so what what I try and bring through the modules that I run on leadership and coaching and mentoring is this understanding that that people are great. Um, people cannot always do what's needed, but they would like to. And the job of us as leaders is to find a way of helping them to find a way themselves. Now, hopefully the way we do that in the classroom mirrors what we're asking you to do when you go out into the wide world. Because if you remember, you know, in our, in our classes, um, quite often, certainly my classes, um, we're changing what we're doing minute by minute because we're letting what's happening in the room guide us as to where we want. What's the best thing that we can do together in this moment over this weekend that we have together to get to the end of the, the, the particular module and make sure that you as a group and as individuals know what 
the right things are to do in whatever it is we're studying. Um, it's, it's that emergent thing again. And that's that's one of the reasons I think that that we have this high statistics that programs fail. Because it depends what you mean by failure. Uh, most programs don't achieve what they set out to achieve. Uh, but the, one of the reasons for that is that what they set out to achieve by the time they get there is not what's needed. Okay, and the most flexible programs, the way we were in class, flexibility. What's working now? What do we need now? What are we going to do? So um, I, I know it's a long answer again. The, the, it's it's a really complex subject, um, and it's one where you'll carry on learning all of your life. None of us who, who teach, none of you come into the room will pretend that we know all the things that we can know. The, the one thing that we do, I'm reading a book at the moment, a um, book called Cloud Cuckoo Land, which is a work of fiction, but it's based upon a Greek uh, play by Diogenes. But the thing that there's a, a question at the heart, heart of it is when you know everything, what is it that you know? And the answer is when you know everything, what you know is that you know nothing. And so that's why that's why curiosity is my thing. Um, so, you know, we, we, we try and create an environment where within the class we do what's necessary to achieve the outcome that we want and teach you the behaviours that when you go out into the wide world, Will allow you to do that with others who maybe don't get it and we help them to find the, the right way as well does that answer the question yes yes it does thank you mike um i uh as gosh i briefly mentioned i'm a huge fan of uh of working on good communication skills of course because they are everything uh connected everything and they are everywhere and um, everything that you that you said, uh, both of you about uh, curiosity, about asking questions and actually listening, about asking good questions and actually listening to the answers, um, making a positive impact. This is something that is is on on the list uh, on the list as well. Uh, connecting the people orientation with the process and business orientation. I think that this is super important as well. So we as transition managers transformational managers, transformational leaders, we are making a positive change with combining all of the skills. Like you mentioned, the uh, variety of skills that we need to have. As soon as there's should need, okay? So I'm going to, to keep my persistence in myself. So it is worth to have uh, as a successful uh, transition managers to, to move forward the initiatives, the programs, portfolios, organizations, teams, and so on and so forth. And so, so this is something that we we can invest in and the investment will be uh, would be good. Uh, I was listening to the podcast like two, two days ago or something and there it was like sentence from uh, from Warren Buffett. Uh, and he's like, what, 92 now or something like that, working every single day. Uh, so uh, still still working in this, in this company. And uh, there was a, a question that he got in one of the interview. What was your the best investment that you ever made? And uh, the interviewer called that it was Coca Cola or something like that. And uh, Warren said, uh, "Investing in myself, investing in myself, investing in my skills, investing in what inflation I will never take over from myself." So this is something that uh, I do believe is a part of the mindset that you that you um, uh, you provide to to the to the groups and people to who is like learning the best uh, in ourselves. Okay, uh, success stories time. I, I I think that this is a good time to to go. Uh, you all are from different organizations, from different experiences, backgrounds. We heard a little bit about some of you. Uh, Marilla mentioned uh, um, and Elena as well. Uh, Shemek, I will move to you um, and um, your background, your experience. Um, uh, let's make a little round of who you are, why you're here, etc. So a little bit of, of the introduction about yourself. But the crucial part is one success story, one successfully delivered project, transformation, transition. From with, I know that it's going to be hard to, to pick just one because of your, uh, you know, extensive success stories. But uh, let's make let's make it happen for for the people who are going to uh, to listen to it. Thank you, Ella. Um, so first few words about myself, right? Uh, I'm Shamek Kotetsky, um, currently joining you from a beautiful city of Amsterdam. Uh, 
I've um, I've been running different projects, programs, and portfolios for majority of my professional life. We started actually with Gosha in, in two organizations, PMI and then Thomson Reuters later on. Then I went through a number of, of different organizations, being on, more on the IT side or on the business side um, as well. Uh, most recently uh, for the Polish audience, I've been with NetGuru and later on with Allegro. Uh, and I was heading the group uh, transformation office. And then uh, currently I'm with the Brentac organization and that's a global leader in, in chemistry distribution. So it's a backbone of number of other industries, um, I would say. And I'm, I'm responsible for transformation office uh, with the group digital transformation. We can call it like that. Uh, so that, that's shortly about me. And now you're asking about, about uh, successful transformations. So, so it's a, the, the interesting question here is how we define the success, right? Uh, that, that's probably the, the interesting thing, right? And it can be a on the delivery of the expected benefits, right? Uh, but but also actually whether we captured the, the right benefits, whether we continued to, in the proper way, a number of healthy metrics um, that, that, um, that would be there. Um, I, I think I'll pick one, one from the... IT industry first, and then when we do the rounds, where we, we can go 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 somewhere somewhere else. But not not the software development, but the in infrastructure. Uh, and one of the interesting uh, things that we were doing in one of the organizations, I was responsible for the mergers and acquisitions integrations. Uh, so when we were buying different organizations, and then as you can imagine, uh, if you want to have successfully grow your bigger wider um, group what you need to do you need to integrate those companies and now uh, how do you want to do it you, you want to do it without losing business right without losing people without lo having additional challenges or, or anything uh, else that would be um, uh, be happening there but at the same time streamlining being more efficient right getting the legacy out of the door because that's usually the problem right you do have a lot of different legacy systems and you, you want to unify simplify and scale, scale up um, on those right and, and I, I remember we were doing what one of the interesting integrations there were a huge transformation for both our organization when we were buying but also for those organizations that, that, that you are buying as well right uh so so, so we we would um we would acquire an organization of 1600 1600 people uh right and being spread on six continents uh being in 16 offices or something like that and and, and super interesting thing was that we you needed to treat each of those locations as a different project itself and different transformation with the people coming from different cultures, with the people coming from different experiences. And apparently they were already being acquired by the, that company before. So we ended up actually having four or five different companies being within that company. They were never fully integrated. So they actually did not have the same culture, did not have the same systems, did not have the, the, the same work approach and so on. So we, we need to understand that we, we are actually running a set of transitions and transformations within a wider uh, umbrella and, and finding this right balance of, of keeping it very personal to those individuals that we are working in each of, of those locations, cultures, setups, and so on, uh, within the cultures that they had in their own organizations, in their umbrella organization, and then in the target organization that we're having, and finding the option of merging those uh, those cultures together to get the best of all the worlds that, that were there. Uh, that was actually quite an interesting challenge. Uh, overall, I believe we succeeded. We've integrated quite successfully um, those uh, those teams. Uh, actually, majority of the people decided to stay with us. Uh, it, when you look at the percentages, it's a, it's a numbers game in, in the wider thing, but actually it's an individual uh, level and decision of each and every of those people, right? So I, I think we, we had maybe... Uh, 80 something percent of people staying with the organization and that is pretty good number when you see uh, all the benchmarks and so uh, I'll finish here yeah that's true you're not finished because I have an additional question <laughs> you know? so what is your biggest learning from this project this transformation because it's quite complex it's a huge yeah. you know, challenge so when you think about it what was the biggest learning for you yeah I think I alluded to, to, to some of those but uh, I think there are two elements. One is that those things are 
super much more complex that you probably can imagine at the very beginning, right? Well, whatever you may imagine about the transformation that would be coming, it would be much more complex on all the levels, right? So especially on the personal and individual level for, for each of the people, but also on the systems, on the processes, on the structures, rules of procedures, whatever you find under this umbrella of system, uh, right? So, so that probably uh, would be one. And second, I, I, I'll probably um, strengthen the word that you already had about the communication, right? Uh, I think there, there's no such thing as over-communication, uh, especially at least in those, in, in those topics, right? Um, we often forget we are in the cycle of, you know, fighting for another day, doing operational work and so on and so forth, but actually finding time to, to, to communicate and, and let people know what's happening, what's expected, what will be happening and so on helps, helps uh, a lot. We tend to forget about it. We we often forgot about it. Even though in theory we we knew about that, right? And we had the cycles and the setups and the uh, all hands meetings and so on. We we really often did not do enough of the communication. So my strength and learning was from that as well. Okay, double down on the communication. I'm going to sign up for that you know, because this is always, always important. Mariusz, I'm going to pass over the question to you. Success story, a little bit of story about yourself. Uh, so uh, people who are in the front of uh, the, including uh, the audience are going to get to know you more. So um, your background, um, the organizations that you have experienced uh, with right now, the organization that you are, you are within and the success story that you've experienced when it comes to transformation, project management, transition management, change management, all of those things that are in the, the umbrella that we are teaching in the program. Mm, uh, okay. Uh, my sector of business is uh, uh, telecommunication and uh, uh, firstly cable, then, um, then GSM uh, operators. And um, my um, the most uh, Developing for me uh, project management or PMO management was uh, managing investment uh, team during uh, really developing uh, time in, in Polish telecommunication development. So uh, that was a great challenge for me because I was an engineer and I had to go to, um, to finance, to, to papers, to, uh, to law and uh, a new, new team. And uh, that was really developing uh, for me um, that always that gives me a lot of energy. Uh, and uh, I am curious and uh, I had occasion to to uh, to go in in some uh, different directions and and how to say to cross them and new people, many additional problems when we go during some villages or, or, or different companies cooperation. So uh, that was from the area of project management uh, and uh, we were um, developing post region network of let's say now Orange. And um, then I moved to Warsaw and, and that was great uh, opportunity to to uh, develop in uh, Orange Technical uh, staff uh, lean, lean management, and that was new for me. And uh, there was occasion for uh, developing technical groups uh, 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 all the country during three years in, in three parts, let's say north, middle, and south part of Poland, uh, and all during normal uh, operations, because that was operations part. So uh, all higher level technical equipment, uh, uh, very responsible uh, equipment, and and uh, uh, that was um, developing new kind of thinking, uh, not processes, but we were building a, a new um, new way of uh, of work, and and for example during. Um, uh, uh, going on site and metering uh, uh, how people work. Mm, that was a, 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 a challenge to to be as one team uh, that we are on the one side that we develop uh, both. 
and uh, mm, we had occasion to open people's eyes. So how they lose time, yes, how they sometimes know, sometimes can't understand. And that was uh, a time of uh, uh, mm, uh, developing skills all uh, of all staff, 1,200 people, developing uh, skills, developing new tools, and in, uh, implementing a new way of uh, cooperation, a new, new way of organization. And uh, uh, there was additional challenge because there is a risk of uh, strikes, let's say, yes, because um, it's complicated, uh, uh, let's say, um, old company, let's say, maybe, yes, to, to some uh, uh, new way of, of thinking mainly and uh, uh, that was uh, very effective that was the, uh, we had um, great managers and uh, uh, open thinking and that was uh, really win-win situation developing for all and uh, optimization and uh, um, people knew that uh, they are. They have new skills uh, used in this company, or maybe on another. Uh, maybe um, they could be outsourced, but uh, smarter. And uh, um, that was uh, helpfully. Um, uh, that was uh, very efficient uh, in the finish. And uh, uh, we've built uh, great connections, uh, friendship, and and uh, and. Uh, I thanks God that I had occasion to take part in that and manage uh, some aspects. Mm. And what else? Uh, um, as Magosia said, self self awareness that's that's great, and uh, we are working on that uh, all our life. Yes. That's true. And the biggest learning for you from the huge uh, transformation and the super complex uh, structure, as you as you already mentioned, from your perspective, the biggest learning for you from that? Um, for me, that was uh, 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 importance and effectiveness of our communication way. That was, uh, uh, we, we met that on the first uh, stage with uh, mm, mm, with support uh, of uh, uh, of uh, uh, Boston Consulting Group, as I remember. So we had a professional support, and uh, our um, our main uh, achievement was uh, uh, really building uh, deep uh, co cooperation and uh, trust. Uh, safety uh, environment uh, uh, in area of all uh, countries. So, so uh, that was uh, really from from deep hard, deep hard. I can say yes. That uh, technique is uh, uh, is easy. People are the most important and, and challenging sometimes. And uh, uh, we are in the way of uh, development. Uh, our our uh, ourself and uh, understanding other other people. So so this is the main area of of uh, development and success. Thank you. Congratulations for that because you know it seems like super uh, huge challenge and uh, to manage it. So yes, uh, great. And we we achieve great energy, positive mm -hmm. energy. That that uh, that's very uh, impressive for me. Yeah, for me as well. So thank you for sharing that story. Muriela, I'm going to pass over to you. And then uh, I have some uh, some questions within the lightning round. So I prepared some for all of you who so are going to, uh, to move to that. But Muriela, I'm going to give uh, uh, you a space about, to tell more about yourself a little bit. We hear, uh, we, we've heard uh, uh, a little bit about the Allen Group and uh, the, um, the challenges, but I'm super interested in, uh, you know, your uh, wider story and uh, what success story that you can share. It can be from your or, you know, current organization or, or previous organizations uh, uh, from the transition perspective, change perspective, project management perspective, and so on. 
Okay, I have to be aware because uh, uh, business secrets are most important for me. <laughs> and I know I, I'm on the streaming uh, at the moment. But uh, mm, regarding to your success stories and uh, this uh, human aspect, I think that most challenging for me at the moment is that in my team, generally speaking, in my team, in my, uh, in my company, uh, we have people in different ages. I have uh, very young people uh, and people before retiring age or in retiring, uh, retiring age. So uh, we are together in the uh, one group. Uh, my general aspect in, in my work is uh, research and development projects. So uh, I think myself uh, for transition uh, management academy is uh, is opportunity to to deal with uh, this difference uh, uh, in age in my team. Thank you for sharing that. It is super important. Uh, today I was listening to a super short podcast about Alpha Generation that is uh, going to they are 14 right now so not yet on the on the market but uh there are super interesting stats about the um, managing uh, the expectations the values the uh, everything that they will need to have as employees so we as organizations need to right now think about how we create our environments for for the future generation that's going to be with with us and um managing the four five generations in a in a market this is going to be a huge um huge um, um challenge and for example one number that i really remember because it stuck with me that only 13 percent of a generation alpha people will come to the office and will work nine five jobs so for us as people in organizations, as HR people, leaders in organizations, uh, we will have a bunch of entrepreneurs, startup owners, founders, and freelancers. So full-time job for those people, 13% of the generation. So we need to be prepared to uh, to a huge uh, transformation when it comes to uh, when it comes to that. Thank you, Marla, for sure for, for sharing. Okay, lightning round. Um, I have some uh, some questions, three questions uh, that I would love for all of you to answer. And uh, we are going to go through them and then we're going to go to the program a little bit, bit because uh, uh, we uh, we need to uh, make it more clear what is in there because right now we are talking about different examples and, uh, and experiences. This is great because it's a practical part of it and it's a huge part of the Transition Manager, Manager Academy. So Mariela, I will start. I will start from you because you are already um, are warmed up. Uh, so the worst leadership advice that you've ever gotten. So this is a question for everyone, but we will start with with you. Oh my God, <laughs> it's a hard question. Uh, I had many, uh, let's say, bad managers in my life, <laughs> but uh, the worst story. Uh, you did it in the wrong way. Uh, uh, let's do it uh, again uh, without any other advices oh, <laughs> and support. Okay. Nice one. Jamaic, over to you. The worst leadership advice that you've ever got. Uh, that's a good question. Um, I can remember the worst leadership statement I've ever heard. I was on a, um, I was on a course for strategic managers with my employee at the time employer at the time and we were talking about all this people stuff people management and coaching and mentoring and one of the managers on there who had a team of about 50 people i think uh, that stuck it for about an hour two hours and said when are we going to stop talking about this and start talking about the real job and i really wanted somebody to take him to one side to say to him i'm sorry but this is the job sadly nobody did I'm hoping he learned another way. Period. Thank you, Mike. Jamek, over to you. Yeah, I think I think it, it was something in line of go and figure it out by yourself. 
right? And uh, the concept, of course, of being self-reliant and finding solutions and so on and so forth is there as long as there is a potential support com coming back if something doesn't work. Well, but I think it, it, if there's no clear guidance, sometimes that may be very challenging. Yeah, that's true. Mario, over to you, the worst leadership or growth advice that you've ever gotten. The, the worst? The worst. The worst. The worst one, yes. Oh, my God. The, the worst one was... Which, which one should I choose? There are so many. Sorry? Which one should I choose? I just wanted to say. No, go ahead. Um... Mm, mm, uh, I, I'm not sure I I, uh, I understand correctly your question. Uh, you mean uh, bad manager? I mean that's the worst uh, leadership advice that you've ever gotten from somebody who advised you something. So the worst thing that you uh, you heard as a leader that you should do or be or something like that. Oh yes, so. Uh, um, um maybe this is not the advice but uh, this is a trap and uh, this is that was very developing for me because uh, uh, i was uh, really experienced in cooperation with uh, many kinds of people uh, but uh, i i i went to a trap uh, which uh, when I was observing and analyzing that during a half of year, uh, 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 on on the finish that uh, that appeared that uh, 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 that was a way of gaslighting, because uh, one information was uh, to the left, one information was to the right, uh, without uh, no notes. Yes, and uh, for me that uh, that was uh, uh, very stressful. Uh, but now uh, I I'm aware that uh, in next time I will not go to that kind of trap. So maybe that is not advice, but a very um, very challenging experience. All of this appeared. <laughs> Thank you, Mariusz. So I'm I'm going to take over because Ola <laughs> dropped off. Uh, so uh, so maybe it's me now. <laughs> The, the worst leadership advice, I was thinking about the question, uh, there was a surprise and I was thinking, come on, I was so lucky, I had great leaders in my life. Uh, and if I had uh, someone, uh, I just left, yeah, so. <laughs> uh, and this person didn't me, uh, didn't give me any advices, uh, leadership advices. Yeah? So, so I asked my uh, assistant, uh, which is uh, chat GPT. I took over Ola and I'm answering your question. So, and I've got some, uh, and it's funny because he gave me some uh, some uh, um, examples of the worst leadership advice you will ever hear. So there are many, I'm not going to read all of them, uh, but one I can choose uh, what I got, micromanage to ensure everything is perfect. Uh, I just hate micromanagement, so that I would get uh, the worst one. Uh, some more, just do what you've always done um, and keep your distance from your team. Uh, so that would be three uh, worst advices uh, I would get. I haven't get them really, although the one with micromanagement, uh, uh, the, the manager I used to have uh, would give me because she liked micromanaging and I hated it. So we were like that. <laughs> yeah, apparently. Okay, thank you, Gisha, for sharing. Uh, yeah, so the next question from the lightning round is about uh, what I tend to overshare. And the three of you that already know me uh, know that uh, I wouldn't be myself if uh, it was uh, it weren't uh, it wasn't like a part of the booking club in here. So the question is about the best book that you recently read that you can, you know, advise other people to read. Because I'm going to start from you. So I'm going to give you, uh, because we <laughs> probably I'm reading the books Mike is reading, because Mike is and listening to the podcast, Mike is listening, because he's sharing with me, and we are sharing with the group, and we, we share quite a lot of books. I've, I've read 
uh, books Mike got for Christmas or something. And I use the app. So I usually, when I got the advice, I download and I read it or uh, at least. So nowadays, I think that's one of, uh, I don't know, I'm enjoying, so I'm reading. And uh, it's connected to the growth and uh, grow and uh, growth and fixed mindset. There is a book by Carol Dweck, and this one is by uh, Mary uh, C. Murphy, and this is Cultures of Growth, and it's really exciting. It's really exciting. I'm really really enjoying. I would like to have only cultures of, of growth around me. So that's my dream. Yeah. So, so it, it's not only individuals, but whole cultures of growth. So that's my recommendation for now. Yeah, that's my dream as well. So if you find some, you know, take me in because we can share that one as well. <laughs> I will not find Ola and you will not find, we can create it. That's what we are doing. Yeah. That's what we are doing. That That's, that's what I do for all my life. If I cannot find, I create it. True story, 100%. Mike, over to you, because you mentioned you, so you're next. <laughs> okay. Um, for reasons I won't go into here, I'm very much interested in the topic of resonance in lots of different ways. Uh, and so I'm reading a lot about resonance at the moment. And one book I've been reading is a book called The Art of Resonance by Anne Bogart. Anne Bogart is a theatre director, and in that she talks about how resonance is the way in which we connect as human beings. It's not just what musical instruments do or what allows you to tune in your television to, uh, to a broadcast signal. Uh, it's the way we connect. And for her, resonance is the way in which an actor connects with the audience and her role as a director in creating that. And I see a lot of parallels between um, the role of a theatre director and the role of a transition manager. So I can re recommend, if you want a bit of an old read, The Art of Resonance by Anne Bogart. Okay, nice one. Thank you, Jamag. All right, here. From the recent setup, I, th I think that there, there are two books that were quite, quite interesting that are not fantasy or science fiction that I read a lot. Uh, and I would say one I was rereading really and, and refreshing my, my memory on, on the book about negotiations, and it's never split the difference. And that's probably one of the best books around negotiations that, that I've ever uh, read and, and so the some podcasts with, with the person that, that that has written it right and it's less about the theoretical uh, assumptions on the persuasion or influential the, the techniques and much more about the examples of what did work for for the author being a bi negotiator um and how that could be translated into into real life, and, and I reread it to, to to refresh my my memory on uh, on some some of the concepts that he had, but but I do recommend it definitely because uh, I've been actually using some of those things that he mentioned there on the wider scale in the organization, not to that much to negotiate with so someone directly uh, here, but uh, some of the concepts of how you res how do you show the situation and the facts and, and what's happening to actually show your point of view and then the others may, may be taking that point of view together and therefore you, you change your mind so in the sense you, you move with the negotiations so so i i did like that and the other book completely in the different zone was uh, uh the secret life of trees uh I, I did like I, I did read read it fairly recently and, and I did enjoy it. Doesn't have direct link maybe to the transition management, right? But indirect would be uh, the author shows up how how the systems uh, of of the uh, trees and nature 
work in general through their observations and some tests and so on and how how it, it's a very complex ma macro organization so to speak that has its laws it has its uh, support yeah. and one, one of the things that i could translate here is just this, uh, that if we don't know about something or we don't understand it doesn't mean that it cannot be complex and interesting and having some some additional cultural uh, value there so who is the author of this book? Uh, I'll tell you in a second. Uh, it's quite interesting. We had the workshop of uh, on this. Okay, Shamir okay. is going to fi fi find it, and I I'm going to pass the question to, Mar to Marius because I see that he already prepared the book. So, Marius, over to you. Um, 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 I have, uh, uh, I'm reading book um, or studying f uh, from Jarosław Gibas. Uh, this is a uh, psycho uh, psychologist, uh, therapist. And this book uh, is uh, Narcissist. Uh, and, uh, um, and this is, uh, they are uh, two opposite points. So uh, uh, what are processes, mechanism of, uh, uh, narcissists in our society which are connected with us we cooperate or negotiate for example yes and um, and opposite uh, let's look in the mirror and uh, what about us uh, uh, maybe we are uh, um, uh, behaving uh, in uh, as them yes to to other people so we all live in in our box, yes, and our awareness is uh, developing us, changing us. As uh, as I uh, lately read read uh, uh, un, um, unconscious uh, our um, uh, our mental uh, mentality is on a level of uh, more than uh, eighty percent. Yes, uh, and uh, only less than twenty percent is conscious. Uh, our behavior, uh, conscious behavior. Yes. So, so uh, uh, how deeply um, we don't understand us. Yes, uh, uh, and uh, that is is really developing for for me in area of uh, um, uh, self awareness and awareness of mechanism processes because. Uh, there are um, uh, uh, there are some processes which uh, happen happened in 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 society. So so uh, for me is is developing uh, on both sides and uh, for business and private life um, and uh, that's all. That's that. Nice one. Yeah, nice one. I I didn't have it on my list. So I'm going to. Uh, to add it to my infinite list of you know books on Amazon and and and, and pick because this is something that never ends. Thank you, Manish, for sharing. Marilla, over to you. Uh, really briefly, if you can share the, the the one of the best books that you are reading at the moment or recently that you can recommend. So very briefly, in the psychology cycle, uh, circle like Marius, uh, Carl Gustav Jung, uh, and Czerwona Droga uh, uh, read uh, read uh, wrote. Uh, Carl Gustav Jung, psychologist, psychiatrist, uh, scientist. Uh, he was focused on uh, people's behaviors and tried to connect visible world with invisible world. It's, it is fascinating for me. It is fascinating and the classics, so I recommend it as well. Um, okay, so the last one, but please answer with one word, okay? Because uh, I'm conscious about the time, so this is something that... Hello. Uh, Mike, uh, he needs to leave uh, uh, soon. Yep. Uh, Mike, do you have the uh, time for last question? No, we're good. We're good. Yeah. Okay. And super, super I, I short. I five minutes to go through the program just to we okay. record it. So, uh, yeah, sure thing. Okay, so one word, okay? One, two words, tops. Uh, the competence, the skill that you are developing, working on right now. Yes. Mike, over to you. Um, that's one word. Uh, what am I working on right now? Me. 
Okay, nice one. Thank you, Gosha. One skill that you're working. Uh, my, uh, there's a uh, there's a uh, uh, I like it quite a lot. I learned it. I don't know from you, maybe from someone else. One little word. I think from you. I learned it. Uh, so you choose a word for the year. Last year was artificial intelligence, and I'm still learning artificial intelligence. Although this uh, the word for this year is flow. So uh, so that's flow. That's harmony. So I'm trying to. I'm taking care more about myself than just others. So I'm learning it quite a lot because usually I focus more on others than myself. So this year is after my I broke the leg, I just uh, leg, the arm. I just need to, I need, I want to, I don't need, I want to um, have some time with myself and, yeah. and having uh, having fun with myself as well. So this is this is answer, Gosha's answer in one word. Okay, <laughs> this is the shortest that shortest that you can do. Okay, thank you, Shamak. Confidence, skill. It's it's managing up. Say again. Say again. up. Okay, I didn't get it. Yeah, interesting. Thank you, Mariusz. Empathy. Okay, thank you, Marila. Awareness and sensitivity in communication. It's a good one for me. It's patience. <laughs> so it's a it's a big one for me. <laughs> okay. Thank you, team. Uh, so, um, being mindful of the time, because I'm going to pass it over to you to say a few words about the program itself. Uh, Mike, Mike, if you want to add something, just um, go and, and do some, because um, from from this meeting, we wanted to uh, to give people the taste what is happening during the program, because that kind of conversations we have during the program, within the groups, within the, the exercises, the practices, and the, um, the part of, uh, of what we are doing here. And right now, we want to give you uh, a taste on what it is, uh, there is in the program uh, that you can uh, make an investment in, uh, the, the biggest investment that you can do in yourself. So go over to you. So I'll be very quick. Um, some of you have seen these presentations. I'm not going to take much of your time. So the audience, to be honest, uh, I could advise to any leader who would like to build self-awareness and to become a better leader and a better person. Yeah. So 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 we um, uh, narrow the audience, although. Uh, you don't need to be a project manager. You can be a manager, leader, uh, or you want uh, you want to develop as a leader. Uh, who are we? Yeah. Lecturers. So some of them you've already met, like Mike, um, Rowlings, uh, Przemek Kotecki, and uh, and myself. Uh, so and we've got uh, Agnieszka kaczmarek kacprzek We've got Michał Rączka, Hania Buze. Uh, Ania Szczepkowska and Jerzy Obolski. So that's our team of lecturers. Uh, we focus uh, on uh, mainly on leadership, although we uh, we based our program on PMI Talent Yango. So we've got these power skills, leadership skills. We cover um, as well the ways of working, different ways of working. So it used to be a technical project management. Now it's ways of working. So agile, uh, waterfall, hybrid, and also uh, the uh, business acumen. So uh, that's uh, some parts of strategy as well. So that's the program structure together 180 hours and six parts so self strategic technical which is ways of working now working with others enabling solutions and creativity so it's facilitation skills visual thinking that's what you like quite a lot uh, your group liked quite a lot uh, sketch noting and trees creative problem solving and developing and influencing so uh, i've already mentioned the talent triangle so it's based on what it's uh, uh, in the uh, uh, PMI recommending Project Management Institute. Um, 
yeah, we want to prepare him to uh, to uh, mm, to be able to couple with the VUCA world. Yeah, so our world is getting more uh, volatile, uncertain, complex, and ambiguous. So uh, we are getting together ready because it's not only students. Uh, preparing we are also learning quite a lot so students are very important and we are learning together and preparing for uh, for the future i already mentioned curiosity yeah so i'm not going to repeat it so uh, feel comfortable with the state of not knowing ask questions listen to others try make mistakes and learn from the mistakes you know? Uh, we uh, we already mentioned it a few times. We bring to the program whatever we learn, what is uh, in the world. So the the most innovative trends, concepts, uh, whatever we tried ourselves, we bring to the uh, to the program. So that's the teaming uh, we recommend, and Amy Edmonds on psychological safety as well. And. The program is run in English. Uh, we've got people from uh, different backgrounds. Uh, we study in English, so you can learn from each other. Some recommendations. Some people are saying that they haven't, uh, they wouldn't change this program for the best vacation, uh, the best holidays in life. So, so it's quite an exciting journey, and we've got partners as well. That's it from me. Okay. Shaman, do you want to add anything from the perspective of uh, um, the, the the audience who you should you you should be? Mike is not here, so we can use the word "should" <laughs> probably, of course. Uh, for whom, from your perspective as a practitioner, as a person who works within the business part, not only from the didact didactic part, uh, the academic part, but from the from the business part, the practitioner part, um, for whom the program is, who can get the most value of. So I think when we were doing it for the first or second time, we had our concept, who is the perfect audience, right? Who, who are the people that should be coming to, 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 to use that word uh, and would benefit the most. And we had the list, we had the criteria and everything like that. We still do have some of those, but actually what we've seen over the, the period of seven editions or so, or so is that... Uh, the, the beauty and, and the additional value added from different both layers of the organizations that the people come and the industries and the and and the level of knowledge on the specific topics uh, starting from sometimes people just after studies starting their, their professional way by but being very very engaged and very focused on, on moving forward uh and on the other side of things we we had uh heads of departments, uh, chief XOs, right, uh, in, in, the, uh, uh, in the training. And those different viewpoints that they had uh, added on top of everything else that, that we, we were able to, to share that. Um, I, I would say that probably knowing what you want to achieve or where you want to go is something that will help. And then it really doesn't matter that much what, what background you come from. Thank you. Uh, Marish Mariola, do you want to add anything before we wrap up the session from the perspective of, of uh, uh, participants, uh, uh, alumni of the, of the program? Uh, what, uh, what is important for the person who has in mind that maybe this is a program for me and maybe this is investment that I can, I can, uh, I can take. So uh, if anything that you would like to add, the stage is yours. I, I have one uh, important point. Uh, 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 thanks uh, Transition um, Management Academy, I uh, could uh, uh, dive to PMI Society. That's uh, great for me. Uh, and uh, thanks, uh, uh, you, I uh, had occasion uh, to achieve PMP certificate, thanks Małgorzata. And, uh, uh, and uh, opened my eyes and thanks that. Uh, I'm going deeper to to different uh, cultures uh, mm, and mm, 
Mm, my curiosity is developing thanks you so so thank you very much again okay thank you marila i want to add something from your perspective if not that's fine i'm just understanding it mm -hmm. at the moment uh, i feel that that i have a strong background in project management i i'm a project manager uh, and that value uh, i can expect is this uh, human element and communication elements. So uh, I see uh, opportunity in this uh, factor. Okay. Thank you so much. Gasha, one more time, where we should go to get more info, where we should go to uh, enroll if you want, just one more time at the very end of the session and we are going to wrap it up. Okay, of course you can contact us directly through LinkedIn, for example, uh, so we will answer all the questions you have. Uh, and. Uh, Mm, on the website, through the website, sign up there, the Kozminski um, University website. Uh, there is a description as well, and there is a, a link how to sign up for the Academy. So that's the, uh, the Kozminski website. That's the main uh, site to, to find out more and, and sign up. Okay, contact thank Kasia. you. Kasia is with yeah. us. Uh, and uh, contact uh, Kasia Stavska for, for the enrollment and for any uh, uh, questions you uh, you have uh, for the program regarding the program, uh, ask, you can contact us. Okay, so going to uh, Kosminski University website, uh, there is a postgraduate studies um, tab and Transition Manager Academy. You can go there and check it out with more details. We get to know more about the program itself. We get to know more about the, 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 the all the elements that are in there, about the people who are involved in it uh, from the didactic perspective. And um, if you have any questions, you can always uh, always uh, ask uh, Kasia Stavska, who is uh, a person who uh, you can contact for further details or all of us on LinkedIn uh, to see how you can um, make the decision, the best decision for your development and your investment. So um, um, this is it for today. Thank you for all of you for being here. I hope that was interesting, informative, and uh, you, you you get the taste when it comes to how we work, how the team works uh, when it comes to the whole program. Um, thank you for inviting me to uh, support you within the, the, the event. I hope that uh, it was helpful as well, and I uh, can't wait to see another edition of Transition Academy uh, starting in the fall. So thank you for today as well. So thank you all, all yeah. of us seeing it and thank you everyone for contributing. Thanks a lot. That was a great time together. Thank you very much. To see you. Thank you for today. Bye. Bye.